Wow, you've seen it all over the internet and it's true. The Sony A1 is an awesome camera that's on another level. But there's one thing I learned on my very first day that I wasn't ready for. Hey Dave Reed here, thanks for tuning in. As a bird photographer, the number one thing I'm looking for, well usually the number one thing I'm looking for is the ability to nail focus on the bird's eye. You can forgive almost anything else in a bird photo. The color can be off, the framing not right, the exposure off, but if the bird's eyes are out of focus, the photo is almost always useless. So when Sony announced they had bird eye focusing on the Alpha 1, I became obsessed with wanting to test it out. This video is about my first day with the Alpha 1 and the out of the box results I got. I'd like to thank you for tuning in and please help to support my channel by subscribing and hitting that notification button below so you won't miss my next video. And if you'd like to learn more about my bird photography and how I took each photo, check out my Instagram channel where I detail what birding camera I used and the camera settings for each bird photo. I'm not sure about you, but when I get new gear, the last thing I do is read the manual and this camera was no exception. I already have a few Sony cameras, so the general operation of the Sony A1 wasn't going to be an issue. Sure, I could learn more about the high-speed settings or the optimum video setup, but that wasn't going to happen. I wanted to get out and shoot. So the day I received it, I quickly popped the battery in the charger and got ready for the next day. Now I have to set things up for you so these videos and photos make a little more sense. First off, the photos you're going to see have all been edited in Lightroom just like I would any other photo. So yes, the exposure, the color, the sharpening, the framing, it's all been adjusted. The videos on the other hand, while well, they have some minor edits to them, but overall they're straight out of camera. One big thing to remember is that I shot these videos with a 100 to 400 millimeter lens handheld. The Sony A1 in-body stabilization worked extremely well. Also here in Canada during late fall or in the winter, the weather can change very quickly. On this day, it was going to be cold and around minus 10 degrees Celsius. On days like this, standing outside can quickly become numbing. So I bundled up wearing warm boots, coat, hat, and gloves, and then headed out to go shoot. When I headed out, the sun was bright and the sky was blue. A great day for testing out my new camera. What I didn't realize was we were expecting a bit of a winter snowstorm. I headed out to one of my favorite locations where I knew there would be at least some chickadees to photograph. About 45 minutes after I started shooting, the clouds started to roll in. The bright sun was gone, and I was left with a dull gray winter's day. Less than ideal for shooting. Then maybe another 30 or 45 minutes later, the snow started. I kept shooting, but soon started to get concerned about the weather ceiling on this camera and my Sony 100-400mm to G Master lens. I know what they say about this camera and lens, but I'm not ready to test the weather ceiling just yet, especially on day one. While I was shooting the chickadees and sparrows, I heard a woodpecker right behind me. I quickly turned and started to snap away. Although I was shooting in manual mode, I couldn't change my settings fast enough. One big disadvantage of shooting in the winter is that you're wearing gloves. I have gloves that have cutouts for my fingertips, so they were out in the cold most of the time and they were numb. It's kind of like being an astronaut, I think. Everything is much slower and much more deliberate when you shoot in the winter. So I simply didn't have time to make adjustments to the camera. So the Sony A1 took over Take a look at these photos. Not the greatest framing or position, but the eyes are in focus. Look how this camera captured a fast moving bird completely underexposed. And here's the edited version of the shot. Crazy how good this shot is. Here's another example of how this camera knew what I was doing. This bird was hopping around a tree branch where I was able to capture my fair share of good shots. But then, when I was reviewing my photos back home, I noticed this shot. The bird was turned away from me and still the Sony A1 was able to track the eyes and keep them in focus. Now this isn't luck, because it happened again. So what was it that I learned on day one shooting the Sony A1? Well, I learned that this camera takes a lot of amazing shots, and I had to rethink how I was approaching my photography. I know a flagship camera should be this good, but the Sony A1 is better than I expected. I've owned other flagship cameras like the Canon 1DX or the Olympus OM-D E-M1X, which is meant for bird photography, and neither of these cameras wowed me like the Sony A1. 
The number of great shots I got during this less than ideal day was overwhelming. I now had to consider the time it takes to call these images. I know, poor me, having to go through so many good shots, but it's true, it changes how you shoot. I think for now I'm going to shoot as I always did, but at the same time I'm going to pay close attention to how I frame up my shots. In the past I would stay in one location long enough to capture several good shots, and this could take an hour or so. Now I think I'll be able to reduce that time considerably, freeing me up for different angles or locations to shoot from. Although the Sony A1 Bird Eye Autofocus is the main reason I picked up this camera, the real benefit may be creativity. I'm now given more time to consider the creative aspect of bird photography and less worried about getting the eye in focus. Only time will tell if this pans out. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a few things about the Sony A1 and its bird eye focus capabilities. I want to thank all of those who have supported my channel by subscribing. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing and hitting that notifications button below so you won't miss my next video. If you'd like to learn more about my bird photography and how I took each photo, check out my Instagram channel where I detailed what birding camera I used and the camera settings I used for each bird photo. The link is in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. I'd like to hear them. Remember, it's your photography. Go shoot it.